Wow. Great to see everyone today. I'm not sure who uh, picked the song selections today. I don't know, uh, Tracy or Tracy, but uh, I don't know how you knew that was my favorite song. Okay, but thank you. Thank you for, uh, I love that. Our God, he is alive. But uh, when I saw that on the program before the meeting there, I, I, I saw that right before my name, and I thought, oh, that's, oh, is that supposed to be the t title of my sermon? You know, lesson today? <laughs> oh, Jason forgot to tell me that that was a title. So anyway, but, uh, uh, so, uh, but there was a song. So uh, amen. amen. But it is great to see everyone uh, today. It's great to be back. Uh, I think it uh, was back uh, last spring, the last time we were here. And, uh, a lot of, uh, lot of older faces that we've known through the years. Uh, and some new faces, yeah, right. so uh, it's great, uh, great to see you. Some of uh, uh, the campus students, uh, singles coming up from <laughs> Dallas, and so it's great to see all of you. Uh, and uh, but, uh, but thank you for uh, having us, inviting us. Uh, you know, it's always great to be around Jason and Rachel. Yeah. They are uh, a joy, and uh, I know they're a joy to you. Uh, but uh, just, just spending time with them and. and uh, you know, hearing about their lives and, and just the sharing, it's always it's so much fun. And we just love them dearly. Uh, I know our family, our whole family, the whole, whole Hooper family, uh, the vet family, you know, uh, we love these guys. And, of course, Ben and Susan, uh, you know, they're our hearts. And, uh, and we love them so much. And it's so great, uh, great to be, uh, be here with them. And, of course, I, you know, Johnny Marie, uh, I mean, we, we just go back. Oh, there you guys are looking over here. Uh, but John and Marie, uh, I mean, dear friends for so, so many years. And uh, it's our sort of our second home away from home when we come, you know, uh, and the hospitality that they, uh, you know, I need, uh, I need a clicker. So, Tracy, you're, uh, you're keeping that, aren't you? Okay. Wow. You know, here I, here I went and built you up, and then you went uh, selfish, hanging on to the clicker. Oh, man. I tell you what. Anyway. <clears throat> She does it for the song leaders, but I've got to advance my own slides, so, okay, okay, well, whatever. But, uh, okay, all right, thank you, thank you. But Sally and I, uh, you know, for those that are, that are sort of new, that we haven't met before, uh, uh, we, we bring uh, greetings uh, from Dallas, the Dallas Church, uh, and also from uh, Clinton Judy Mosley. Uh, uh, we, we were texting back and forth this morning, and uh, Clint said, make sure you tell them that uh, we send our love. So, okay, I, I got that done. All right, didn't forget that. Check. I love checkoff lists. I love to check things off. But anyway, but, uh, anyway uh, you know, Sally and I are blessed to have uh, nine grandchildren, and uh, we are in a, a stage of life where we absolutely love, love life. Uh, here in May... Uh, we went into our, I don't want to say retirement, because that's not really what it is. You never retire from the kingdom of God. Right. Amen? Amen? You just get old and die. <laughs> so, nothing changes, all right? But that word, retirement, you know, it, it carries something. Cause it, but, so we decided back early on in May that we were going to call it New Adventure. This is our new adventure. And so we, uh, we are in our new adventure stage of life, and uh, we absolutely love it. Uh, you know, after, uh, I don't know, be, I, won't, I don't have any years being disciples, but we've been in Dallas. Uh, we just, uh, in December, be 24 years. Wow. And, uh, you know, it's just been an incredible, incredible journey that we're on, and we're still on it, and we got a long way to go. But, uh, you know, Derek and Leanne send their love, and... Uh, Dave and Ange from Austin and Steve and Trish are there with us in, uh, uh, in Fort Worth. And, and so uh, this, this picture is actually back in December of 2014. I, 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 didn't, br I didn't show you the late, later picture because I love this one. <laughs> because this one's from a cabin up in Missouri where we spent a Christmas. And, uh, and a six-bedroom cabin. And we're going back there this Christmas nice. for five days. And... Guys, you know, it's, it's, it's family, man. It's, it's fun. Uh, but anyway, uh, we bring our love. You know, I want to put a little plug in to the singles. we have any singles in the house? Okay. You know, on our new adventure, of course, Sally, we've been doing this now for, I don't know, 10 years, working with disciples today uh, on these fellowship cruises. 
And, uh, and so we're going to be doing a lot of these more. We've got three coming up next year. And so uh, singles, you know, out of, out of Galveston, all right, right here in, in somewhat our backyard, okay? Uh, but there's going to be like 100-plus singles going out of Galveston. And incredible fellowship. The Lambs, you know, will be there. Uh, and uh, this is uh, several that this, we've done on this. And it's always an amazing, amazing trip. But we don't want to leave out the marrieds and other singles and others, okay? So uh, this one's going to be in August, all right, to Alaska, all right? I'm putting in shameless plugs, all right? I, I, you know, uh, and then another one uh, to Hawaii, all right? That's, uh, that's going to be in October, all right? So, uh, <clears throat> so, you know, that's for everybody, anybody that wants to go, okay? Uh, but the campus need to stay home and study. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Your day will come. All right. Your day will come. But I'm sorry, you got to earn it. You got to go. It's like. But uh, I, uh, I want to talk to you today. How do you stay? How do you remain faithful to Jesus all the days of your life? You know what? That's a good question, right? Yes. How do you stay faithful? The $64,000 question. There used to be a show on about that. How do you stay faithful to Jesus all the days of your life? You know, there's a couple of Psalms that uh, Sally and I love to pray through the Psalms. Guys, we've been doing this for several years to where every day, almost every day, that we will take, we, we just take starting Psalm 1, Going all the way through Psalms, and we'll just we'll we'll pray. I'll I'll take half of it. She'll take half of it, and then we pray. Guys, it keeps your heart focused on the right thing, <laughs> you know. And and so I love I love the Psalm here. Uh, see if I can read that from here. Oh, give thanks to the Lord for He is good; His steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Give thanks. To the Lord. You know, you go through the Psalms and you get one thing out of it, and that's how to be thankful. That's how to be grateful for life. Because there's a lot of trials and tribulations <laughs> and, and crying out in anguish in the Psalms. I mean, there's good, the bad, the ugly in the Psalms. But, but you know, it's incredible. Back, uh, back early on this year, you know, entering into the um, new adventure phase of life. Okay, uh, you know, there were some, some things that I had to sort of work through in my own heart, you know. Where, where uh, you know, how is this going to work? I mean, am, am I going to feel fulfilled? You know, you know, you go through all that when you, when you reach that age. And, and I was out praying one morning, and my mind had sort of turned in a negative direction. Are we going to have enough money to survive, you know? Are, you know, are we going to have the relationships that we've had in the past? Or are, they, are we going to be, you know, needed as much now? And, and you know, not only, I mean, there are all these floods of, of, of thoughts. And, and, you know, a lot of them were negative. <laughs> okay? A lot of them were negative. And, and that morning I'd read this, this one psalm. It said, this is the day that the Lord has made. This is the day. Today is the day that the Lord has made. Yeah. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. You know, and it spoke to my heart. It really spoke to my heart. And it just called me back to, you know what? Today is the first day in the rest of my life. Yeah. I mean, and I can make it what I want. <laughs> sure. I can choose to be what I want. I, I can, I can, we can turn this new adventure into what we want it to be, yeah. you know? It can be a downer, or it can be an upper. And so, this passage I keep coming back to every day since then. I, 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 I quote, the, you know, I, I, I remind myself on you know, my prayer walks every morning, this is the day the Lord has made. Let me rejoice and be thankful and live in it. Amen. You know, I've got a um, video here. Let's watch for a second.
Lord, I'm struggling. Show me what I have to be thankful for. Lord, I'm struggling. Show me what I have to be thankful for. Mm. Wow. Wow. When I saw that, I was like, I thought at the end of the day, you know, it's going to be, wow, thank you, Lord. But isn't that a lot like we can be? Yeah. You know? When, when, we're, uh, when we're going through trials and we're going through things in our life, you know, we just, we lose sight of what we have to be thankful for. Wow. And it's so easy to do. Yeah. No matter how old you get, no matter how strong you feel like you are, no matter, you know, how, how spiritually strong or whatever, you, you can get in a funk really quickly, yeah. <laughs> you know. And it's like, wow, what, you know, what was I thinking? I mean, and, uh, and. I'm speaking from experience because I sort of hit, hit a funk like that, all right, a while back, <laughs> back later, uh, earlier part of the year. And, uh, you know, trying to think through all these different things and all this stuff. And, and, and one morning I just had to wake up and say, wait a minute, what, what am I doing? What am I doing? You know, so I want to talk to you about, oh, how do we stay faithful all the days of our life, okay? Well, Jesus, Jesus showed us how. And he showed us that the way to do this, guys, is to always be thankful. Mm -hmm. Just waking up every day being thankful for the things that God has given us. You know, Jesus lived in a spirit of thankfulness to his Father. He never took the blessings of his Father for granted, and he continually took the time to stop and thank his Father. You know, I mean, examples. Okay, a few examples here. He showed us how to be thankful. Look, Matthew chapter 14, verse 19. Ordering the people to sit down in the grass, he took five loaves and two and the two fish. And looking where? Looking up towards heaven, he blessed the food. And breaking the loaves, he gave them to the disciples, and the disciples gave them to the crowds. You know, simple, simple thing is just five loaves and two fish. Jesus knew where the power came from. He knew who gave that. You know, he thanked God. He, he raised his eyes to heaven. 
He knew. Jesus fully realized the source of all things. Jesus thanked God in advance. God hadn't, hadn't provided for all those people wow. yet. Yeah, it's true. But he looked up and blessed it because he knew what his father could do. Wow. You know, that was his heart. I mean, he showed us being thankful can bring miracles into your life. Did you know that? Wow. It can bring it into your life. So thankfulness to God, it releases the power of faith for God to work in your life. You know, I know back uh, a while back, back um, I think it was back last year, I took a week and I said, you know what? I, on my prayer walks, I am not going to ask God this week for one thing. Come on. You know, usually it's God, please do this and be this and be with us. And, be, do, do, you know, da, 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 da. and so I, I'm just, I'm just going to praise God and I'm going to thank God. And first couple of days, it was hard. It was hard to do. I mean, without, uh, uh, you know, you just, it just, uh, 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 wanting to, uh, but, but God, but, you know, because there was so many things going on and so many, you know, you wanted God to bless, you know, our, our family and this situation and this study. You know, yeah. And it was just, I just had to stop myself and just, <laughs> but, but thank you, God, for, and then I started thanking God for each one of those situations that I was going to ask him for. Thank you for blessing our granddaughter in her health. Thank you for, for, you know, providing the answers to, you know, in situations. And I, so I started thanking God for those things that hadn't happened yet. Wow. And it, it was an amazing week. <laughs> it was an incredible week of prayer. And, and, and I do that quite often. It's, it's just, you know, I mean, still you sort of gravitate back to, to asking God. But, but still, just, just thanking God for things, you know. Uh, which one is it? Yeah, God should. Yeah. Uh, and then, you know, another, just another example. God, uh, here in Matthew uh, chapter 13, verse 36, he took the, he, again, you know, feeding of, of, of the 4,000, he took the seven loaves of the, and, and the fish, this time seven loaves and one fish, and giving thanks, he broke them and started just giving them out to the disciples, you know. Again, knowing that his father would provide. Jesus, through his faithfulness, announcing that God would provide. And thankfulness puts it in God's hand to act. Wow. Mm. You know? That's awesome. Expecting something to happen. Expecting God to work. Where, where is our faith when it comes to this? You know, before the Last Supper, Matthew chapter 26, verse 26 through 27, he says, and while they were eating, again, eating together. Don't we disciples love to eat? Man. <laughs> Hi, Jackie. <laughs> Don't we love to eat? I mean, I tell you what, it's just, we just love to eat together and, and, and fellowship. But, but Jesus had, had his disciples there. And you know what? Judas was there in his midst, his betrayer. But he, was, he still was accepting him and loving him, even, even knowing that. But he took, but, but while they were eating, Jesus took some bread. And after a blessing, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And when he had taken the cup and given thanks, he gave it to them saying, Drink all of it, all of it, all of you. You know, Jesus was faithful even though he was about to face his greatest trial. Wow. You know, instead of being negative, instead of complaining, you know, about what was coming and having sort of a, you know, that, uh, that edge and that attitude, that, you know, one of how and we're, we're approaching something like that, how we just get so self-focused. But he was still thanking God and, and praising God for that, for this. You know, uh, again, Jesus showed us. Uh, and again, this is, you know, Jesus. This is all about Jesus. Yeah. You know, all about Jesus and his heart. And uh, in John chapter 11, verse 41. And so they removed that stone. This is when Lazarus was uh, raising Lazarus from the dead. Then Jesus raised his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. He was raising 
one of his best friends from the grave. And yet he was thanking God before it ever happened that God had heard him. Wow. You know? I mean, just, just the thought of how our thankfulness to God can bring about miracles in our own life. Yeah. Instead, of, instead of focusing on, on the patterns of, of, of negative, negative thinking. And so I just, you know, to, to think about this, you know, think about it. You know, God, I, I know you can come through in this situation. I know it's, 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 it, looks, it looks like there's nothing good that can happen in here. I mean, Lazarus was dead, already buried, already in the tomb, yeah. you know. I mean, basically, they had to remove the stone. And yet, he's thanking God for hearing him and answering his prayer. Wow. You think he can't do things like that in your life? Wow. Come on, you think he doesn't want to do things like that? Come on. You know, I think it's all about our heart and allowing him to work in our life. <laughs> you know, no matter where we are, allowing him to be able to do this. You know, uh, let's, uh, I want to I wanna talk a little bit about, okay, how can we develop this in our own life, all right? How can we make thankfulness a habit in our own life? And uh, there's, a, there's a book, uh, author out, his, his name of his book, Dr. Mitchell, is uh, Building Strong Families. And he said approximately 90% of what we do every day is governed by the habits in our lives. Wow. Just the habit that we develop. You know, a simple habit of being thankful. You know, a Princeton University study claims that you do the same thing every day for 28 day, consecutive days, and it will become a habit. Have you ever tried that? Yes. Have you ever tried it? It works. <laughs> it really does. You know, back in, um, in January, uh, Sally and I uh, had, uh, we went on this, what's called a Whole30 diet. And uh, I don't know, and uh, after 30 days of, of the way, you know, eating, the, the type of eating, you know, you'd stand away from sweets and, and, uh, and dairy and all, just eating meats and, and vegetables and all. We, we got into such a habit, you know, of, of of eating like that, at the end of 30 days, we didn't want to give it up. Amen. Because it, it had just become part of, of you know, and, and, re and so we continued it another 30, another month. And after we'd finished that month, we did it another month. And then we just had to sort of back off because, well, you know, we just want to lose any more weight. But, it, uh, you know, but, but it, it just, it, it become ingrained. In, and that's, you know, habits that we can. So, number one, number one, make, make thankfulness a habit that, that you do. You know, thankfulness is a choice, not a feeling. Mm, right. Choose it. Wow. Amen. Choose it. You can choose to have an attitude of gratitude every day. Start thanking God for your blessings rather than complaining about what you don't have. I, by nature, am a negative person. Just, just ask my wife, okay? <laughs> you know, a lot of it was, I don't know, growing up maybe I was a little insecure, uh, you know, and, and, and all. But, but, you know, I think some of it, too, has been in training because, you know, coming along, my, my, my degree was math, and so early on in my career, I... I was uh, in uh, aerospace engineering work, and you know there was a motto that uh, that saw, talked about zero defects, zero defects. And this was back in the late '60s when the Apollo Saturn V program was going on and putting man on the moon. And you didn't make mistakes. You make a mistake in one of your programs that was computing the trajectory analysis of getting man to the moon, and it could be fatal. Yeah. Maybe not for you, but for them. Okay. Yeah. So there was a lot of pressure on, on, on finding and, you know, zero defects. And everyone strived for that zero defects award. But, you know, you didn't want your stuff going to QA and letting them find your problems. So you, you looked at things with a critical eye. You know, going in the ministry, you know, at, 
at age 40. Uh, I already had this sort of ingrained. And so in the ministry, you, you, you're taught to you walk in, you look around, you see what needs to be done. You, you, you look at everything with a critical eye, in a sense. And so, because you want to better, you, you know, you want to better things. And so it's so easy to develop that critical spirit. And, and I find myself going back a lot of times to that, you know, and, and realizing that, that I, can, I can sort of go down that road. But, but I, I don't want to do that in the kingdom of God, you know. I mean, yes, an eye on yourself and an eye to improve and, and all of that. But you can't stay in this critical mindset. You know, being thankful is a choice that you make. You know, Man's Search for Meaning ranks as one of the most thought-provoking books that I've ever read. In the, in the, Holocaust, the Holocaust survivor, remember uh, Victor Frankl, uh, writes about his experience in the Nazi concentration camp. Everything was taken away from the Jewish prisoners. They were stripped of their clothing, their, all of their pictures, all of their personal belongings. The Nazi captors even took away their names and gave them numbers. And Frankl's number was 119. 104. That was his number. But he said, there's one thing that the Nazis could not take away from us. Everything can be taken away, quote, everything can be taken away from a man, but one thing, the last of human freedoms to choose one's attitude in any given set of circumstances. Wow. The ability to choose. I choose to be grateful. And it's amazing, you know, going through, I mean, wow. But the choice is, I am going to be thankful. And, you know, I know, again, it, there's, a, there's a fascinating study that was done by a, a professor, uh, Medvik, uh, that reveals a relative importance of subjective attitudes over and over and above objective circumstances. This uh, professor uh, studied Olympic medalists and discovered that bronze medalists, we just had the Olympics just not too long ago, yeah. but that bronze medalists were quantif quantif quantifiably happier than silver medalists. Wow. You know? You know why? I mean, it's just it's interesting, and here's why. Silver medalists tended to focus on how close they came to winning gold. Yeah. Just missed it within a tenth of a second, within two tenths of a second, and I could have been the gold medalist. I, I could have the gold medal. Instead, I got the silver. You know? So they weren't satisfied. But the bronze medalist tended to focus on how close they came to not even winning a medal. Yeah. <laughs> so they were fired up. Yeah. I got it. I just got it, you know. I just got it. I mean, isn't that amazing? Yeah. I mean, with a silver and, and you know, and, and a bronze medalist being happier about, about what their, their medal. Wow. But that's, that's us. <laughs> That's humans. That's just us because, you know, we, we tend to focus so much on what, what we don't have. Thankfulness is a choice, not a feeling. Choose it. Um, number two, okay, look past the circumstances and look to the one who has the power to change everything. You know, think about Jesus, all right, in his thankfulness. I mean, he, he looked to God. He knew God had the power. Now, if God chose not only to provide, you know, those five, five fish and one loaf or, or the, the, you know, wh whatever, that was God. That was God's choice. But Jesus believed that he could do it. He believed it with all of his heart. And so in our own, in our own lives, I mean, do we believe that God wants to bring about miracles in our own lives. Whatever it is, whatever we're doing, you know, he wants to do that. You know, I love 1 first, first, uh, 
Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. You know, um, there's an uh, article here I want to read. I know so many people whose adversity has become their ministry. They go through a painful divorce or a death of a child or destructive addiction, but God helps them climb out of the pit so that they can help others in similar situations. God is in the business of recycling our pain and using it for someone else's gain. Wow. Amen. That's awesome. God is in the business of recycling our pain and using it for someone else's gain. You think, well, look at my situation. Look what I'm going through. You know, no one else has, has to go through what I go through. The more problems you have, the more potential you have to help people. One of the most paralyzing mistakes we make is thinking that our problems somehow disqualify us from being used by God. Yeah. God wants to use every person. Yeah. 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 And us going through diversity and going through things that we can, we can get negative. We can take us down that negative path and, and sort of get into ourselves and, you know, poor me and, and all of this, that, that God wants to take all of that and, and use it to his glory yeah. and help other people. Amen. You know, I, I, I love being able to do this, you know. If you don't have any problems, then you don't have any potential <laughs> to help others, all right? You're, you're living in a, a different world, all right? We all have issues and things that we go through, all right? I'm sorry, bust any bubbles in here. I don't know. You may be living in that world, but maybe you should be up here speaking. Anyway, here's, you know, you know your ability to help others uh, heal is limited to where you've been wounded. And so, you know, and, and God brings comfort. We have a, a couple, uh, some of you may know, it's been in Dallas, but Don and Donna Gay. Don Gay, I mean, they, they married o older in life. I mean, this is an older couple. And uh, they are just such a loving couple. And, and Don uh, developed uh, prostate cancer and, you know, had to go through all of that. <coughs> and, uh, uh, you know, he, he is in re remission and, and all of that. But, but, you know, they had it on their heart to take that, what they went through, that, that adversity, and turn it into a, a ministry. And they have a, a cancer recovery ministry now wow. there in Dallas. That they have, you know, all this going out, you know, emails and prayer requests and all this going on. And, and they, they, you know, and, and they're just, they're an amazing couple. Such a loving couple because they took, a, a tough situation and turned it around and made it a blessing to others. Amen. And uh, we, we get, I mean, just stuff coming out every day about, you know, prayer requests and this and that, doing this and that and the other. You know, I think of another sister, Terry Winter. Terry lost her husband. Uh, he drowned back, I don't know, five, five years ago. I don't remember how many years ago, but, but it was a number of years ago. They had five children. And it was tough. It was hard. But, you know, one by one, you know, Cassidy, the, the, the disciple of Jesus, uh, Nathaniel and Lindy and Matthew have all been baptized into Christ wow. since then. Wow. And now Mallory, the youngest, is, is just coming up of, of age. But, but how her faith and her strength wow. kept that family strong. And, and, and she didn't go down the, 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 the you know, go down the road. Of being better, but but it, but it built her faith, and she she helped she has helped so many other people. You know, I think about Sean. Where's Sean? Is Sean? I, he's in here. Was in here a few minutes ago. Oh yeah, oh yeah. There he is. Okay. Yeah. Raise your hand, Sean. There he is. Back here on the back row. Okay. Amen. Amen. You know what? This brother, I, I have never seen him not smiling. Yeah. I have never seen him not and, and encouraging, and yeah. you know, and he just so just. You know what? I mean, I, I just, just a great example 
uh, of, of just, you know, turning hard situations, okay, and not letting it get you down, but, but using it to build others up and glorify others. And there's so many, so many great examples like that. And, but, uh, but I think we can, we, you know, we can uh, look past the circumstances and look to the one who has the power to change us in everything. Okay. All right. Number three. Uh, you know, see every problem as an opportunity for God to be God. And again, you know, just, just what we're talking about here. Every obstacle you face is an invitation for God to get involved, to thank him that he is bigger than any circumstances you're facing. You know, and I think about this when it really comes to, to, our, to our evangelism and, and reaching out. Because it's amazing the stories that we hear about how God, you know, works in, 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 in just amazing life stories of, wow, I was praying today that, that I would, would meet someone that could help me right. in my life. And, yeah. and, and all of a sudden... The door opens and someone shares and they come, you know, I mean, these stories happen all the time. Yeah. Amazing how just opportunities when we're positive, when we're thinking outward and not inward about how God can work and how God can lead us to these things. And so let, let God work in your life Amen. in this way, in a, in a very positive way. You know, replace complaining with thankfulness. Philippians chapter 2, verse 14 says, Do all things without grumbling or disputing. Without grumbling or complaining, as some translations. But, you know, it's, man, it's, it's, that's hard. It's, it's, it's hard to do sometimes, you know. I like to uh, encourage, encourage uh, at time, from time to time is to have a, have a uh, thank you list and a, a grateful list. And start, start writing. And, you know, you start writing pages after page after page of things that you have to be thankful for. You know, uh, a lot of things, you know, hey, the taxes we pay. Man, we can really get down, right? But you know what? Because it means I'm employed. Right. We get to pay taxes. Yeah, Amen. You know? <laughs> the clothes that fit a little too snug. <laughs> hey, it means we got, we got enough to eat. <laughs> you know? <laughs> My shadow who watches me at work. Well, because it means that I'm out in the sunshine. You know? The lawn that needs mowing. The windows that need cleaning. The gutters that need fixing. Well, it means I've got a home. The spot that I find in the far end of the parking lot. Couldn't get anything closer. Well, at least it means I'm, I'm capable of walking. You know, all the complaining I hear about our government, well, it does mean that we have freedom of speech. The lady behind me in church who sings off key. Mm, do we have any of that? Yeah. <laughs> well, at least it means I can hear. You know? The piles of laundry and ironing. Well, at least we have loved ones nearby that's messing those up, right? The alarm that goes off in the early morning hours. Well, at least it means I'm alive. Weariness and aching muscles at the end of the day. Well, it, because it means that I've been productive. You know, every negative complaining thought we have can be turned into a thankful blessing from God, okay? Wow. You know, when we really think about it, when we really live it out yeah. each day. Uh, next, you know, begin the day with thanking God that you're giving a, given another day to live. You know, I love the passage. Uh, let me get it over here, right down. In Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11 through 13. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Then you will call upon me and come and pray to me and I will listen to you. Yep. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. 
You know, God wants to have that type of communication and relationship with you. You know, it's fun to text, isn't it? Don't you love to get a text during the day from a close friend that says, hey, thinking about you. I, you know, I mean, it's funny because we have certain people in our lives that there's a few that still like to talk on the phone. And I've gotten to the point where I'd so much rather text someone a short <laughs> message, you know. I, mean, I don't know if they're, they're at work, they're in the office, or, or, you know, they're in the classroom, and, or, you know, they can't talk. But, but you can just text a short message. And isn't it great the way God texts us? Do you feel that? Yeah. All during the day, you get a little short text from God that says, I love you. Aww. I'm thinking about you. I believe in you. You can do this. Aww. You know? And, and when we think back thankful thoughts, we're texting God back, saying, thank you, God. Wow. Thank you for that conversation. Thank you for that person. Thank you for me opening my mouth and sharing with that person who's going to come with me to Bible talk tonight. You know, that type of communication is what God wants from each one of us, you know. And our minds can go so quickly to just thinking about the negative, you know, during the day and what I'm not, what I don't have and I, you know, and all this. And instead of thinking positive and letting God work in our lives to, to bring about miracles and to bring about victories every day and just just thinking about those things can just bring such joy to your life and so those are you know again you know the, the i think the um i got a few more but just look around and realize that there's always someone who has it more difficult than you just look around you know that's why i love hope youth corps I love sending our kids. I love going to these places. I love serving. I love serving in our Saturday Academy because it brings you back all. It just brings you back to how, how much we do have, how much this church is blessed and, and, and all what you have and places you can live in this world every day. I mean, Sally and I pray together every day and, and we just thank God. God's put us in, in a beautiful place, beautiful state. You guys have a beautiful state. You live in beautiful communities. People around you. We have brothers and sisters around the world that every day, they're fighting for their life. They don't know whether they're going to be persecuted or shot or imprisoned for their faith. I mean, the Middle East is, I mean, we're talking about some trying situations. You know, Africa, all the stuff going on in a lot of those countries. I mean, we, all of us, we could have been born in some of those other places. But God has blessed us with this incredible city and communities that you live. Yeah. You know, how grateful we should be yeah. every day for that. Yeah. You know, just pray for your brothers and sisters around the world. Yeah. You know, pray for them. Amen. There are some tough situations out there. And then uh, spend time with thankful people, uh, positive people. You know, if, if they're being negative, you just turn it and be positive. I mean, I've got some of those brothers in my life where, you know, I'll listen to for about two seconds and I'll just, I'll cut it right off and I'll, I'll go to something very positive. I'll bring them back to a scripture. I'll do something. I'm not going to listen to it. All right. We're not going to go down that road. And so, you know, just, and I think we can help each other out by doing that is being positive. You got a great church family here. Hey, you know, you're small. You're, you're small, you know, you may not, you, you know, and, but yet there's great, there's, there's excitement about being small guys yeah. and creating family. Yeah. Larger churches, we have, we have some tough situations, but, you know, in a larger church in Dallas, you know, man, it's great, but, but, you know, it's hard to, to create family when you got so many members and we're, we're dividing our services down now. We're in the Dallas region, you know, uh, over over 450 members now, but we've got three services. We had three services today, you know, three different, well, two at our same location at 9 and 11.30. And, uh, and in fact, yeah, Clint's getting ready to preach right now at the 11.30 <laughs> service, all right? Say a, little say a little prayer for him, all right? Say a little prayer for him. 
because we're in our we're in a new facility. It's sort of similar to this, you know. It's 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 uh, we'll house about 150 people and the classrooms and but but today is our first sort of time there, and uh, and so but anyway, I'm getting off track. Uh, but anyway, surround yourself with positive people, and uh, it's contagious. Uh, you know, First First Thessalonians chapter, chapter two, verse uh, chapter one, verse two. Paul says. Uh, we give thanks to God always for all of you, constantly mentioning you in our prayers. And so, uh, you know, just uh, continue to, uh, to love the Lord. And uh, wait a minute. Oh, yeah. And uh, so uh, in closing, I want to come back to Psalm chapter uh, 118. That says, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Now, turn to your neighbor, and I want you to say that. This is the day the Lord has made. All right. This is the day that the Lord has made. Today. Today's the day. All right. I'm going to rejoice. I'm going to rejoice and be glad in it. Because I want to see what blessings and miracles God is going to bring into my life today. Amen. We love you. It's great being with you. Amen. Amen. <laughs>